welcome guys, welcome to the match report, we're going to look back, it's a disappointing, it's not our Carabao Cup anymore, it's not our Cup, it isn't, so there you go, disappointing, uh, West Ham nil, City nil, but a 5-3 win for the Hammers on, we didn't even get to take our last penalty, how embarrassing is that, a 5-3 defeat at the London Stadium. If I win some pains this morning, guys, please forgive me. I woke up with cramp. 12 hours on a, in a car and a coach yesterday there and back. It was, was an, I'm too old. I'm too old for this. So I woke, went to bed about half four after I wrote this little thing up and uh, woke up about half eight with terrible cramp. So I'm hobbling about this morning. I don't feel 100% to be honest with you. I'm, I'm getting far too old for these. I, I should be able to enjoy, you know, go and stay overnight, Scar, but I can't afford that malarkey unfortunately but uh, yeah I might I might have to sort of not be as keen to do a trip to Brighton and London in the same in a few days you know in the, in the space of four or five days in the future but hey we'll carry on won't we anyway let's talk about the game yeah not the greatest guys was it Let, let's have a quick summing up of it I've not had a chance to watch it back but I've got quite a good view in the stadium and I, I, I was quite impressed that with the view I'm not impressed with the stadium is it the layout etc I've never never been to the London stadium before but I was quite happy with my view you actually will see some images coming up. I, I could see everything that was going on, which is more I could say than for Brighton last week, and I was stood right behind the goal. So, and even at the Etihad, I struggled to see everything that's going on, even even in my position in, in the singing section. So, hey, there you go. It wasn't that bad. The City lineup, yeah, I got ten right. I was quite happy with that. It was just uh, KDB for Jesus surprised me. I didn't think KDB would play, but perhaps yeah, he did need minutes in his legs, didn't he? he did mean, need some sort of form finding. It didn't really help last night, did he? But hey, there you go. Uh, Stefan Walker, Stones, Aki Zinchenko, Ferner Palmer, Gundogan, Sterling, KDB, Amaras. The West Ham team, yeah, I don't think it was their strongest. I've not had a quick look, guys. I'm please, I apologise. Whether it's how different it was to their normal 11, if you like, but it certainly wasn't the strongest, was it? Ariola, Johnson, Dawson, Diop, Cresswell, Masuaku, uh, Suke, uh, Noble, Lanzini, Vlasic, and Yarmolenko. Yeah, I think that's it. That's it. Pronounce those right. Who was in charge, of course, Mr. John Moss, as useless as ever. His line was Mark Perry and Timothy Wood. I think they did a fair enough job. And the fourth official was Andre Mariner. Yeah, on to the match report. Just a quick summing up. As I say, I'm not going to, no, no goals to talk about. It's, you know, Carabao Cup ends after, what, many years? Seems like seems like lots of years, doesn't it? Uh, a fairly... Sadly, I mean, it was against... I thought it was a fairly average West Ham team. And they certainly played like a fairly average West Ham team. There's nothing in that team that really impressed me that much. Um Probably only two. So, say of our team, our starting 11, just two guys who you'd expect in our strongest team. So, basically, nine, you know, I'm not going to say second raters, but obviously, of that team, there's only perhaps two who would normally start in our best, best team with our squad. So, yeah, and the thing is, Old ghost, wasn't it? Old ghost dropping up a poor finishing. Uh, and some OK keeping, yeah. Well, I don't think it was spectacular. Some of the saves the keeper made, Oriola, whatever, whatever his name is, Oriola, whatever he's called, uh, Chocolate Biscuit, uh, made some good saves, but not fantastic saves. A lot of the stuff was quite uh, saveable, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's always going to be a loss when it gets to penalties, of course, and uh, the one that Foden missed was the only one I ever team missed, of course, and uh, it didn't help when we took off possibly two of our sort of shooing for penalties, is it? KDB and Maris. But obviously Pep didn't didn't think it would go to penalties. I think most of us in the stand thought this is going to go to penalties, but Pep gambled on the on the on the chance that we would finish this off in normal time, and unfortunately we didn't. Uh, I think the shootout was the only time the West Ham fans got uh, got uh, animated. I thought they were very poor generally. Uh, there's a few fans, obviously either side of the. Uh, of us, uh, mainly in the bottom tier and the top tier, sort of giving it out. But uh, I thought they were quite pathetic. I mean, it was quid, kids for a quid, wasn't it? But the atmosphere was a bit tame, uh, very disappointing. But they did manage to get behind the team with booze, etc. when it came to the penalty shootout. But that was the most we'd heard from them all match, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, in the in the match itself, City culprits, there's quite a few on in front of goal. Aki perhaps should have done better with the header. Uh, he certainly had, had the goal to aim at and he just headed it really wide, didn't he? Uh, Sterling, again, doesn't know what to do uh, when he's in the box. He gets in the great positions, doesn't know what to do with it, whether to shoot a pass and if it, Trouble is he delays it that long, we lose the, the possibilities. Uh, Gundogan should have hit the target, at least from an angle. Uh, he's running in all right, he's got to put it wide of the keeper, but at least, at least hit the target, he put, he put it wide. Uh, Stones as well, uh, not, good header, a good header, but uh, obviously didn't give 
keeper Ariola, isn't it? Ariola, enough to do. And the main culprit, sadly, who had a good game overall, was Palmer, of course. But uh, I think there was at least three occasions, I think, where he hit it over the bar. There was one that was close enough in, certainly at our end in the second half, um, for him to do better. He wasn't that far out and he blasted way over. Um, but you can't blame can't really blame him, can we, when, when those are more experienced around him are, not, are letting us down and not putting it in the net. So I'm not going to blame Palmer for, for one iota. Uh, West Ham had half chances, of course, probably four or three or four half chances, shots from a little bit of distance, but on the balance of play, uh, I think we can be thoroughly, thoroughly disappointed to go out like this. And uh, sadly, as I said, the writing was on the wall. We're all, all talking hindsight, but we know when City make more than six changes to the to a team, we, we do struggle. We've done it before. We've got previous. It's there. It's, it's, in, it's in the stats. Whether we've won games or not, we've struggled. Uh, and against a, a good team like West Ham, even though they perhaps weren't the strongest, uh, yeah, we struggled. We made nine changes from from the last game, so we did, we did struggle with this. And I'd say it's not hindsight. We just know the stats are there. Talking about stats, yeah, West Ham had seven shots, two on target. City had twenty five shots, seven on target. Uh, only thirty five percent possession for West Ham, so sixty five for us. We, we played well uh, passing wise, and nothing. There was no falling in, uh, if, in if you like in uh, sort of skill factor, if you like. I'm, I'm, getting the passes correct. It was 81% pass completion for West Ham and 90% for us. So there's no, nothing wrong with that. Let's get on to the ratings, guys. Interesting. There's a couple where I totally disagree with Stuart on this. As I say, from my view where I was, uh, we might have different differing views from his view in the press box or wherever, it, wherever he was, he watched it. Right, uh, I'll give you uh, Stuart's rating and I'll have a quick word myself. Uh, my starting score is, is just a lowly six today, the minimum I give. Uh, so if they did better than that, we'll get higher. If they did, I thought they did worse, we'll get lower. If they did okay, we'll get a six. All right, we'll start with St Zach Stefan. Stuart says, alert to Palmway, a stinging noble shot. Mm, could, have been, could have done better with that, to be honest with you. And no major alarms in passing it around at the back. Give him, Stuart's given him a six. Yeah, I'll give him a six. He was competent. Uh, rarely troubled, to be honest with you. But uh, I think there's perhaps one of the penalties he could have saved. But I will give him a six anyway. Kyle Walker linked up with Mara, says Stuart, and overlapped a couple of times. But it all looked a bit half-hearted. It did, as, as did the team sometimes, or both teams, in, in all fairness. Yeah, he's given him a six. I'd give, I'd give Kyle a six as well. Not really needed defensively. We didn't really need to utilise his uh, pace too much, but uh, certainly wasn't our best going forward. He didn't, you know, there's lots of things where he could have perhaps done a better ball. So, But I will give him a standard six, just, just average. Uh, John Stone, Stewart says, can't do any more than this kind of solid, assured defending couple with slick, precise passing. Yeah, it's one of the good things to come out of the game. I like Stones. I mean, I'd be quite happy if he's put back alongside Diaz in our main team. Stewart's given a seven again i give him a seven i think he did everything asked in, in a quite a rare start don't forget he's not started many games has he so i was uh happy with john stones last night nathan aki doesn't have the solid presence of diaz says stewart or the build-up of stones and laporte so he's given a six yeah uh, yeah i've, I've given him a six uh he did nothing wrong that i could see i'm not gonna have a down on aki i thought he played uh, quite well with him with what we had apart from that header uh which he could have been a hero come to and he would have been more than six out of ten but i'll I'll give him a six as a reasonable Stones partner on the night against a pretty a pretty ineffective West Ham strike force, to be honest with you. Uh, Alex Zinchenko, great block on Yarmolenko's shot. Capped a very assured return to Stewart, a return to action. So he's given him a seven. Yeah, he's been kind. I'll give him 6.5. He's certainly better than the average. Very satisfactory considering he doesn't he doesn't get many chances. And uh, uh, I did notice one or two minor mistakes. But, you know, as I say, he's not been playing that much, has he? So I'll give him a nice 6.5, a little bit better. At Ferner, roll back the years by giving City a firm foundation, says Stuart, sniffing out trouble repeatedly. Stuart's given him an eight. Yeah, he's gone mad. Yeah, I'll, I will give him a seven. I'll give him a high score, which is one of my highest scores today. He did command that middle. Uh, middle and uh, West, well, West Ham had little, couldn't really cope uh, in the middle. They had nothing to compete with him. They didn't have their own guy up there. They didn't have anyone who could battle away. And he, he did a, a very competent job didn't he which is what we'd expect from Ferner. Gundogan did more than most to get the Blues rumbling but his shooting boots deserted him. Yes you just give him a seven I'm not going as high as that. Uh, I thought a guy with his experience he's the sort of guys in these games that I want to step up and perhaps get a goal or two uh, and he did because we know he can uh, 
Um, he, he was all right, don't get me wrong, but I mean, I will give him the standard six. That I just thought he was okay uh, without being anything spectacular. To say we need players like Gundogan and all our experienced players to step up in these games, and he didn't, he didn't quite do it. All right, he's got a different nine or ten players around him, but. Uh, not not quite for me. Uh, on to Kevin De Bruyne. Stuart says, always involved, but the fine margins are not his friend at the moment. Nothing came off. Well, I think one or two things probably came off, but Stuart's given a five. I've, I've echoed that. I think it was a five. It was a unexpected start, but yes, he probably does need time because he's not really finding it at the moment, is he? So, uh, obviously, Pep's trying to play him into form. Unfortunately, he's not playing into form. It ain't working yet. But, uh, again, it was uh, another very poor performance. Even his corners were poor when he was forced to take a corner when, like, uh, other players who normally do weren't on the pitch. So, yeah, I'd have to echo the five. as one of our worst players, unfortunately. Uh, not for the first time in the last few games. Uh, Riyad Mahrez, one of those nights, says Stuart, when nothing came off for him. It certainly didn't. The crosses hit the first man. The shots were sliced. Stuart's give him a five. I'd have to echo that again. Again, you get these sort of performances with Mahrez, you, you sort of borderline say you can't be bothered. Uh, I don't want to say that about anybody. But, uh, yeah, he didn't. There was two chances to get shots away. He didn't. Chances to get crosses in when he didn't. And sometimes when he crossed, it was too long. Yeah, tepid, tepid stuff, I'd say, from Mahrez last night. He's, as I say, to me, he's not in our best start at 11. And displays like that last night won't do him any favours. Cole Palmer, Stuart said, ballooned his big chance over the bar. Yeah, I think that's talking about one in the second half. I think he, he missed another couple of chances as well, a bit from distance. But some of his link-up play was superb. It was, and he grew into the game. So Stuart's given him a seven. Ah, yeah, I've echoed that. I'd give him a seven. Uh, sadly, that ca calmness that we saw uh, in the Champions League in front of the goal totally deserted him. He snatched at chances, unfortunately. But uh, as far as creativity is concerned, right, he lost the ball a few times, but he was one of our most creative players on the night. So he's well worth a seven for me, a seven out of ten. As I say, not, not 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 the finished article by any means, but he's got a long way to go. But, yeah, he did okay, the lad. Uh, Ryan Sterling, Stewart said, repeatedly got into great positions and started to make them count. Teed up Palmer for the big chance, started to make them count. He's, Stewart's giving him seven. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it was a big chance for Palmer. But him one out of how many. Uh, he played the full game. He didn't come on as a sub. Uh I just really, Stuart, I just don't know where he got seven from me. I'm, I'm going to give him a five. I might have been pushed to a 5.5 for that one chance, but I'm sorry. Uh, this was just a typical Sterling performance. He gets in great spots, does a lot a lot of things right, then produces no end products apart from that one thing for Palmer. But it didn't end up in the net, did it, unfortunately? So it's not an assist. But uh, yeah, Stuart, I think you've been a bit kind to him there, mate, with a seven. I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't give him a seven. Most guys around me certainly wouldn't give him a seven, put it that way. Uh, Jean Cangelo for Walker came on as a sub, of course, at half time. A couple of sloppy mistakes, says Stuart, but uh, a great penalty. Well, it was. There was four. There was three great penalties, weren't there? But unfortunately, it wasn't enough, was it? Obviously, that one we missed wasn't great, but. Uh, Stuart's giving him a six. Yeah, I'm going to give him a six, obviously, for half a game. Uh, did a dying duck impression up front, went down when we were under pressure and didn't get up, which isn't right. I mean, the play carried on and he, he stayed down. But he, he might have been hurt, I don't know, but I don't particularly think he was, to be honest with you. But uh, I want a little bit more than that. I, want, I don't want him rolling around, uh, roll, roll around on the ground like, uh, well, we used to call them tarts in the old days, didn't we? But a uh, softy, whatever, whatever we call them, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not into that sort of thing, to be honest with you. So, uh, yeah, I'll give him a six. So, Phil Foden from Mara, 71. He couldn't change it. Poor penalty it was. But he's not a penalty taker, is he? I was very surprised he strolled up, as most people were, for that first one. Stewart's given him a five. I'm not marked him. He was not on the pitch long enough. Uh, but he was OK when he did come on. But it was a poor penalty. We got to make the at least work the goalkeeper, but I, he didn't. Uh, Jesus for Palmer, seventy six. Stuart, no time to mark. Yeah, I mean, he was hit and miss within that brief appearance, wasn't he? It was typical Jesus. You know, he did a couple of things right, but looked, looked a bit daft and another couple. You know, he made errors and then tried to make up from and stuff like that. But, okay. Jack Grealish for De Bruyne. Uh, yeah, Elwood, Jesus, great penalty, wasn't it? I liked his penalty. It worked. I mean, it might not work another day, but hey, there you go. Jack Grealish, another good penalty, of course. Uh, De Bruyne on 82. No time to mark. Uh, booed by the morons again at West Ham. I thought West Ham fans were better than that, to be honest with you. I thought they were a bit more uh, football orientated, but obviously not. And it was kids for a quid. Did all the kids booing Grealish now when he was the England hero uh, not so long ago? That's pathetic. Absolutely pathetic, guys. If any of you are listening the way, fans, you're sad and pathetic and just a waste of time, and you're all a bunch of sheep. 
I expect Villa fans perhaps to boo him, and even that's a bit bit iffy, isn't it? Uh, but you lot, you know, you're in a waste of space, in my opinion. Right, man of the match. Yeah, I'm going to give it Ferner. I'm going to give Ferner the man of the match. I thought it was uh, nothing. <laughs> I'm struggling to give one last night. It's one of those games where perhaps I wouldn't normally do one, but uh, I think Fernandino did everything that was asked of him and, and strolled around in that midfield and controlled everything. Right, West Ham going forward. Yeah, as I said, I've not checked the West Ham side. I'm sure there's a few changes to the normal team. I mean, obviously Antonio wasn't playing, was he, for a start? He was, uh, he was sort of one of their best players at the moment, or has been recently. So whether he was injured, I don't know. But I don't think it was their best team. Uh, and to be honest with you, to be kind to them, I think they were playing for penalties from the get-go. I just I thought they were quite happy to keep it and draw it out. The ref was uh, the ref the the keeper was wasting time from early doors like like they do against us there. But all credit to them, five penalties, five penalties scored. You can't do more than that, can you, as a team in a penalty shootout against City, even though we've not got the greatest reputation, do have a good record in penalty shootouts over recent years, so that's not too bad. I mean, they're currently top four. As I said, I'm not going to base too much on that performance last night, but... Uh, uh, I don't. I can't see anything. I can't see him finishing top four. I just. I think they're doing very, very well at the moment, and uh, they will need a little bit of luck in the cup to progress because there's certainly two or three better teams than them still left in the competition. But it's a great chance for them to do that. They'll have an okay season, and I'm sure the side is better when we play there in the in the Premier when we play them in the Premier League. I'm sure it'll be a, f a far better side. But then, then again, so will ours. But uh, there you go. I, they were a bit, a bit negative. I thought last tonight, a bit, a bit apprehensive. They didn't go for it. They just sat, sat back and sort of tried to soak it up, and, and they did because we didn't do, we did put it in the net, did we? But uh, yeah, not, not the greatest West Ham performance, but all credit to them. They, they got through on the night, which is all that matters. Uh, City, yeah, uh, disappointing as I said, but no surprise given the circumstances. It's a game we should have won. Uh, looking at those stats, yeah, we should have won. Of course, we, 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 how many games have we had like that over the years? When we, even when we lose a game, we usually dominate it. We don't usually lose a game where we get battered. So you think of PSG, for instance, which is our best team. We, we more or less were all over and we just couldn't score, could we? So perhaps Sky, the interview, Pep again, well, about asking about the lack of striker options. And these are the sort of games where it's obviously got to raise its ugly head, isn't it? But... Uh, I think if uh, if we had a team, we did have an option of a striker. I mean, this is where this this is definitely missing. Certainly at this level, perhaps if we had a, a lower, like if Dilap had been fit for the last uh, couple of months, and perhaps it's the sort of game that Pep would have stuck him in, would have took a chance, and I think he would have made a big difference to the team if we'd had at least at least one striker, even even if he's a not a second. I'm not going to say second rate. That's not, but you know what I mean. Even if he's not uh, in our starting eleven, best starting eleven or best start fifteen squad, even uh, a lad who could come in and does, does a job as a striker. And this was the sort of game where uh, we'd need someone like that. And we say, Delap, another month on because he's just come back, hasn't he? Perhaps might have sque squeaked in this one, but uh, it's just the circumstances and we've got no other options, have we? Let's be honest about it. Um, but again, our season players like Mares, like KDB, like Gundogan, like Sterling, I mean, he's our season player. He might be out of form, but he's one of our experienced guys. Should have enough to produce just one piece of magic in a game. That's all it needed last night. If City had scored a goal, um, I'm sorry, we would have scored more or, or won the game 1 0 because uh, I, I don't think, you know, I think we were far better. But we just didn't have that one guy. And we've got plenty of guys on that pitch with experience to produce that one bit of magic. And that's disappointing. And we sort of uh, went out really pretty limp, didn't we? Let's be honest about it. After all these years, and Pep, Pep will speak it up, of course he will. But as fans, we know we perhaps, uh, yeah, we, we didn't quite do it. And it perhaps brings home to us as well that, yeah, we still are possibly one or two players away from being the world beaters we could be with this team. And it's been a case like that for a few years now, in my opinion. We've always been at least a couple of players short of just, just that team that could t take everything and it's been proven hasn't it and I think it's still the position now I think uh, I think it brought it home to us again last night you know it's a it's a Carabao Cup game it's you know it's it's in the scale of things not important but I think I think the signs are there that we say we just you know again we could get very close to the big one again this year of course we can still win the title of course we could win the FA Cup with a bit of luck and um, don't get drawn away at tough teams which is what you need but uh, 
yeah, it is what it is. What it is. But I say we're just, just, just show we're a fantastic team, but we're just not quite super fantastic, are we? But uh, if you know what I mean, anyway, let me know what you think, guys. Let me know what uh, what you thought of the game. Give us your player ratings as well if we get a chance. Don't forget, please join me again this week as we look back. I got through this without my cramp coming again. I'm just trying to keep my legs sort of moving. I'm not sure if I have to keep it still moving. I'll have to read up on it. Uh, we look forward to the Crystal Palace home game. So the History Boys features out there looking back at a, a game back in 1989 with that Steve Copple's Crystal Palace uh, visiting Main Road, of course. So please check that out. There'll be odds show coming out. The odds on the match, of course. And there will, of course, be a full match preview. So we'll have a look. We'll try and predict our team and Palace's team. See how well I do. I've been doing okay lately. I'm, I've not been doing too bad at all, to be honest with you. But uh, there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Please leave leave your comments and any thoughts. And uh, thanks for putting up with this old duffer who's probably getting too old now for these uh, these uh, jaunts, uh, day trips. And uh, I don't know. In my head, I'm in my head. I'm uh, 26. Unfortunately, in real life, I'm switch that round. I'm 62. So there you go. So, you know, it's uh, it is what it is, isn't it, guys? But we'll keep going, won't we? Sit until we die. Anyway, thanks for watching. What are we going to do rest day? Have a great one. Catch yourselves, catch your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other to meet here again on the Citizen Channel. Or please have a look at my film and TV channel. I might watch a film later. I might try and cheer myself up. I've got one lined up there I can watch uh, with it being Halloween. I won't give you any hints what it's called. Uh, Halloween or something or other. No, I won't tell you. Uh, anyway, have a look at the film and TV channel if you get a chance to try and inform and entertain on there. But until we meet again there or wherever or back here on the Citizen Channel, I only ask one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, blue. Stay, stay well clear of cramp as well, and don't pretend, don't pretend you're younger than what you are. Grow, grow old gracefully, or let, no, let's grow old disgracefully. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Come on, city, ladies. <laughs>